Welcome back, folks, to a very wet part of the north of England. Where are we, Yorkshire? Yorkshire, yes. We're in Catterick, so no drone shots, because the whole thing's basically a giant military base, so I'm not going to risk getting the drone up. Today, we are travelling south. We need to get all the way down to Fetford, which is in Norfolk, so we don't have a lot of time for travel content, so we thought we'd answer some of your all-important questions on our way down to the south of England. So, question number one. Have you two, that's us two, that's us two, this time round, living in a van full time together, found more things that annoy you about each other that you haven't quite seen until now? Yes, your bloody long legs. They are so long and they just, they're everywhere and she sits really weird. She'll just sit on the chair cross-legged. <laughs> my long legs, <laughs> they're just my, um, they've always been Look my like, ah, ah, steady. <laughs> Stretch you up for the gym. <laughs> so my long legs. Um, no, I already knew the hundreds of things that annoy me about Emily beforehand, so there's nothing new, but I will say this time we are finding it, uh, because we're in like wetter countries where we can't get out so much in the daytime mm -hmm. if the weather's bad, we're finding the short days at this time of year quite tricky, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, it can be, um, can be the, the old uh, SAD. Yeah, sad disease and cabin fever is sinking in. So normally when we're away in the van at this time of year, we're either in the Alps in the snow, so yeah. it's, even though it's cold, it's sunny, plus there's lots to do because it's a very snow activity orientated country isn't it yes or we've been in like spain and warmer climates whereas here if it rains all day and you're inside and then it's dark by four it is challenging isn't yeah, it yeah and as you can hear the rain is here yes it's but still we've, here we've got new hobbies that are combating that ready yes we get asked this one all the time so i'm going to keep it very very short and that is how did we meet we met drunk in a nightclub and then louise pursued me until i said yes that's not true folks she pursued me chased me chased me down didn't you Another question we get pretty much daily. Are we ever gonna see Louise without her hat? No. A huge bonus of being able to use the gym is not only do we keep fit, it also keeps us clean, we get a shower, so we often use swimming pools, gyms, campsites, obviously, and good old fashioned flannel washes <laughs> if a gym isn't available. Now, another question that comes up all the time is why don't we secure AJ when we're driving? And we do, and let me show you. AJ, come on, buddy. AJ's harness has a uh, a back and a front securing. So we have a little tether point that's your bud around the side of the van. There you go. And then we just hook him on here and then he is tethered to the van and that is also secured. So you don't always see it because we generally get shots at the top and it's underneath here. But he is secured. Never fear people, he is secured. Right, 216 miles, about four hours of driving, but at least the sun's come out. Things as we're driving, I thought we'd do some Louise questions. So Louise, here's your first question. You have to get it right. <laughs> Louise, how long did it take you to convert Fanny? I'm part way through a conversion and my missus is twisting on taking too long. Uh, it took about nine months to convert the van. I was working full time and filming the whole thing. So I only had weekends, did most of it over winter. So short days over winter. Um, whilst working and on holidays, so yeah, about nine months. So tell your missus to stop twisting. It's a lengthy process and it's a battle. It is a battle, but I'm with your missus on it because I wanted it done straight away as well. So it's just what us women do. Your next question, Louise, are you ready? I'm ready. Hi, will you still be doing your weekly videos when you start doing your new home or will you be too busy for the videos? Actually, I've got another one to go with this, so hold on. Girls, 2024 means two vids a week. Come on, please, we are nearly neighbours. Yes, there will definitely be weekly videos once we get the house. And also, people have asked if there's going to be on a separate channel. Nope, it's all going to be on the same channel. So still on the Camper Vibe channel, one video a week. I'll document as much as I can at the renovation. Um, we <laughs> More than one video a week. I'd love to, I'd absolutely love to, but it's just time. So with the, the house renovation, it's going to depend a lot on the weather, mm -hmm. funds for materials to get on with things and then of course we're always filming around Emily's job so that's what slows us down a lot of the time is Emily's job. <laughs> just in, the, in the winters when the days are short we don't have much filming time but that being said if we do have lots of content we do tend to go to twice a week so I will try my best some weeks next year to put out a few extra videos uh, particularly with the renovation. Yeah, but I'm not gonna let her overdo it because you know she's getting old now she needs to have her rest time in between. 
I don't get any rest time though, do I? You give me other jobs. Uh, anyway, anyway, next question. When you went camping in that haunted forest on your own a few months ago, how on earth and why did you stay a second night? I was absolutely horrified watching it and would have been out of there like a shop. So would I. The honest reason I stayed for night number two is because I, I was aware that I'd said earlier on in the video, oh, I'm gonna come for two nights, and then that was it. Whereas if I hadn't have said that, I would have just got the hell out of Dodge, but I'd said it and I didn't want to look like what's on YouTube, so I forced myself to say the second night. I will say though, I slept better on the second night than I did the first. I, yeah, I would have been gone, like, well, actually, I wouldn't have been gone when I heard the footsteps, because I'd have been too scared to get out, so. Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't have stayed that second night either. Weirdo. used to doing big four hour drives like that, are we? Well, it took five with traffic. No, we are not. Someone's tired and probably hungry and someone else needs to walk, but I reckon we've got the energy for one more question. And that question is, curious about the initials AJ, what do they stand for? Absolute jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer they stand for like Alfred James or something, Alfred Johnson, but no, he is a rescue. So that's the name he came with and the amount of training needs he had when he arrived. We figured a name change wasn't a good idea. So we just stuck with AJ, didn't we? We did, yeah. And then that's developed uh, loads of different names as well over the years. Yeah, Roosty Toosty, all sorts Ajaxy of- Ajaxy Rooney. Ajaxy Rooney, but he is going to be well in need of a walk. So yes. should we go? Yes, come on, bud. This next question comes up every single week, so I'm glad it's came up here. And that is, I love seeing AJ in your vlogs. Do you let him off the lead at all? We do, not very often, and it's not filmed very often. And that is because he is a really, really good hunter and likes to chase anything that slightly moves. So we have to be full eyes on him and prepared to try and get him and chase him because we've had to do that many a time. Yeah, if you're not aware, AJ is half Husky and Husky's prey drive is incredibly strong and their ability to run and just keep running, it's what they're bred for and he does. He just goes and it takes days to find him. So we're very careful. And the other reason is his leg. Yes, his leg. He had his cruciate ligament operated on nearly, nearly three years ago now and it took a good year and a half for it to fully heal and it was an absolutely really invasive operation and he's now got a metal plate in his leg so and that also means that his other leg is more prone to go in has got a higher percentage and actually i've been praised by the vets many a time for the fact that his other leg hasn't gone and we've protected it so well and that's because he's nearly 11 now and to go through all of that again it's just too much. 28 tablets a day for two weeks. So when we do let him off, it's normally when the cameras are off so mm -hmm. that we can properly supervise. One, he's not getting too, over, too overexcited because yes. you try telling him he's got bad legs and two, so that he doesn't run away and go into a road or get himself in trouble. Yeah, exactly, that's why. And on that note, I reckon it's dinner time. Uh, always. It's been a long day so far, so egg and beans on toast is for dinner, my favourite. Uh, while Emily's cooking, I thought we'd do the Emily-based question. So are you ready? I am ready. And remember, you've got to get this right. <laughs> I'll always get it right. I work a lot from home, but pop into the office to stay connected more with the team I manage. How do you stay connected with your team? Now, Louise calls it gossiping, but I actually call it keeping in contact with people. So when you're in the office, you generally have a little chit chat around like having a coffee or in the kitchen or anything like that. I'll do that on the phone, so I'll just ring up and have a general chat with all of my team there so that that way I'm, I'm not missing out on that when I go out and see them on site or when I go in the office and stuff I'm keeping that rapport so it's not always just work 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 related I still keep the little sort of um, Gossip, personal gossiping. He's not keep the gossip. gossip going. The personal stuff there. That's how I keep the relationships going. And when we do, when we are back in the country, you do tend to pop home, don't you? Yes. Or fly back. Yeah. Sometimes I like to fly back just to. It's mainly to get some space from Louise, not really for the people at, at work. But yeah, I'll do that. And when I'm back home, I go into the office and spend some time there. Question number two: What is the first meal you would like to have in your new home? <laughs> That's an easy one, it's gonna be a Chinese. <laughs> because we're gonna have no like workable cooking appliances or anything like that. Well, we might do, I don't know. Well, I can't... Van. We'll have oh. a van. <laughs> yeah, but that's not in the cottage, is it? No, see, no, this is in, the, in our new home. I vote for roast dinner. 
I vote it's going to be Chinese. <laughs> the next question is a two-parter. So, what is Emily's most favourite sweet treat? All of them. <laughs> if you had to pick one? <laughs> if I had to pick one, actually candy kittens. The, um, I can't remember the flavour though, the pink and white ones, the candy kittens, love them. And the second part of this question, completely different topic, is I think you would both make great parents. Do you see yourselves having children sometime in the future? I think we would make great parents as well, but no, I don't want any children. I just, we like to, we like our nieces and nephews and friends' children. We like to spend time with them and then we like to give them back. I think Emily's made our position on children quite clear there. Neither of us want to have children. We're just, we've just got too much of the world to see and stuff, haven't we? We have. Do you know what? I think it's okay to be selfish and that's what we are. We're selfish. We want our time. We want to explore and children We're are not selfish. They're overpopulated in the UK anyway. Anyway, <laughs> next question. Um, this is another Chinese related question. In your snack tour of Ireland, have you tried a spice bag from a Chinese takeaway yet? We've heard a lot about these. I've seen the spice bags and I've seen it on the menus, but I haven't found a vegetable vegetarian one. I absolutely love salt and pepper chips and I get them all the time wherever I can get them but when it comes to the spice bag normally it's like chicken and chips and stuff so unfortunately I haven't. I'll do you all a solid and I will try a spice bag from an Irish Chinese. That'll be fun because she's no good with spice <laughs> at true. all. It's very true. I'll give this one to Emily as well because I don't like scary movies at all. I find them quite boring but what's your, you love them. What's your favourite scary movies to watch under the duvet in Fanny? I can think of better things to be doing under the duvet in Fanny oh, than watching scary movies. Louise! I don't actually get to watch that many because she doesn't like them but I am a fan of the classic Nightmare on Elm Street because I remember being so scared of it as a child that I always sleep like this now. I don't know if you can see that. I always sleep like <laughs> this now just in case it comes in the only scary movie that's ever made me scared is um, Jeepers Creepers and oh, that's, that's freaky. That's because I was babysitting on my own as a teenager and got really stoned and then I just shit myself <laughs> so don't do I drugs think, kids. I think this conversation, th this question has had too much information on it. This next question is definitely for you and gets asked a lot by other people on Instagram and that is when will joke of the day be returning? It's back now! Louise? Emily. <laughs> <laughs> why do you never see Santa in a hospital? I don't know. Why do you never see Santa in a hospital? Because he has private elf care. <laughs> private elf. That's a good elf. one for you with your I'm accent. Right. Private elf care, innit, mate? <laughs> he has private elf care, doesn't he? Doesn't he? <laughs> that probably wasn't the best joke to pick, actually. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, Emily does what's called joke of the day, which I find incredibly annoying whilst I'm driving. And yeah, we do that there. But it's very popular, like I say, on Instagram. So if, yeah. you let, if you love joke of the day, let us know in the comments. <laughs> I, I won't speak because you'll just speak over me. Final question then, and I promise I won't speak over you. <laughs> now that brow's cleared up. Um, what do, this is both of us really, you've got more than me. What do both of our tattoos mean? Are you going to get your kit off? I'll get my kit off oh. any day. <laughs> I wouldn't. That's a lie. I'm not like that. You didn't plan that, did you? I did. You was just like, oh, I'll just speak and see what random shit comes out. <laughs> it wasn't good. Uh, yeah, kit off. Okay. Wait a minute. Let me turn my beans off. We're going. We're going. Oh, it was like a Christmas tease. I love the way my body's moving to the beat. <laughs> it's not very sexy. I've got probably a few more than you, haven't I? You've got quite a few more than me. Yeah. It's the result of a drunken. Like Miss Miss You, basically. This one, I've got stars on my wrist there. I think I had that in Plymouth. I was drunk. This one, it's actually had been done over. It was a moon underneath, but it looked like a C. And my mum thought I'd had it for her because her name was Kat, so I got a flower over it. <laughs> Sorry, mum, I love you really. Anyway, oh my god, I came up. <laughs> Which one are we doing? This big monstrosity at the bottom? <laughs> yeah, this one is like the one that I, I hate the most but that's been done over a few times. You can tell them what this was originally. <laughs> tell them what it was. It was a Playboy bunny. <laughs> <laughs> another drunken mistake. It was, it was another drunken mistake actually, yes. And then I had some extra bits around it and yeah, it's, that's how it's ended up. Then I've got in my back some wording. It says, when you only see one set of footprints, that's when I carried you. And then there were footprints there, but I think they've faded now. No, there's two left. The there's ones two at the left. bottom have gone, yeah. They actually were for my nephews. So that one's quite a nice one. And then what's that other thing? Is that that Catholic thing? Oh, this is a rosary bead. Yep. That was my first run ashore tattoo in Gibraltar. Oh. Yeah. So, drunk again. <laughs> <laughs> 
And this one was just means that if I ever get divorced from Louise, I need to find somebody else called Louise. So if there's any other Louises out there, hit me up. Oh, I'm being serious. Louises, get in the comments. Come on, Louise, get your kit off. Let's do it. I don't need to get my kit off. I haven't had them all over my body like you. <laughs> so I've got the same one as you, matching there with your name on. Can you get it up? Yeah, I can get it up there, maybe. Oh. So this one is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. I think it looks like something else, Louise. It did, I had that one on its own and it did look a bit like a sperm. So then I had added, I've got Danger Mouse, Top Cat. I don't know if you can see. Top Cat? Yep. <laughs> it's and like on, Twister. Well, I'm just going to move my foot. On this side, we've got Alvin from the Chipmunks. So if you can't tell, I very much love um, 80s and 90s cartoons. I haven't had that finished yet, but I'm going to have Cyril Snare from the Raccoons. Who remembers Cyril Snare? Yeah, that's all I've got. Apart from that, I'm pure. Pure? I don't yeah. think you're pure, but pure. okay. <laughs> right, should we have dinner? Yeah. Oh, she's come to play with the lights. <laughs> no, but don't fight it. Sammy, come up, Sammy. There you go. Shall I do the turn on? The big reveal? Yes. Yes. Put your hat on. Oh, for God's sake. Come on. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I bet I put a pin through it somewhere. You must have put your Pokemon knives. <laughs> they work. I got a gown down and everything. Oh, Louise. Are you sure you've got battery? Are you sure the batteries haven't died? There are no batteries. Are you for real? The Grinch is well and truly this bad, isn't it? I've got another set, don't worry. Okay, so small minor um, problem with the Christmas lights. We will get on with them shortly. We're gonna do, we were, we're gonna do quick fire questions <laughs> while we put the uh, Christmas decorations up, but it's not going well. So let's just smash some out now, ready? Okay, fine. Do you plan on taking AJ and Summer on your adventures and will you ever go to Nepal, not Naples? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, will you go to Naples and do the Everest base camp? Probably not, but will we ever go to Nepal <laughs> and do the Everest base camp? <laughs> Yes, I just summer come through with us. And no, I'm never going to go to Nepal and do the Everest Base Camp because I've watched too many Netflix documentaries and it's too scary. We might go to Nepal, we just won't be doing Everest. Would you both do a video over how you make your videos? Do you make a plan? Do you drone shots, ideas and how it all comes together? There's already a video, we've done it. I'll put a link in the description below. This question, next question comes from Quebec in Canada. Will you ever come this way for a vacation? Hell yes, yes we will. I've been there before, but I really want to go with Louise because she's never been. Canada's very high on the list, but it will be when we don't have AJ mm -hmm. anymore. Do you get a lot of issues with people being homophobic when you travel? No. no. What are your top five tips for newbie camper vanners? Got any? Uh, you've got loads. <laughs> um, if you don't even have your van yet, make sure you rent one first or rent a few different sizes, shapes, layouts, variations to make sure that you're going to be comfortable in what you're going to be in, I would say. And also driving. Yeah, and also driving. Make sure you can drive a large vehicle and you're happy parking it. Uh, my second tip would be... For your first trip, go somewhere easy. So if you're going for a big trip, maybe choose somewhere like France, where there's mm -hmm. lots of um, airs and stuff like that. I wouldn't go somewhere difficult. So yeah, France would be a good starting place or Scotland perhaps, or somewhere yeah. where it's relatively easy. If you are wild camping and you arrive at a huge park up and there's one other van there, do not park directly <laughs> next to them. If there's space, leave space. It's safer to park further away. I think a lot of people get there and think, well, there's the vans, I'll just park right next to that one. Don't. Don't do yeah. that. I would say be comfortable with emptying your own toilet waste. Yes. Get, oh yeah, get used to how it works. So figure out how the toilet, water and gas mm -hmm. and everything works before you set off and then you won't be stuck with it. And is that four? We need, we need one more. One more. One more. One more. If you're wild camping and you are, you've planned a route and you're looking for a route. I'm going, just stick, stick with me, stick with me, I'm going. <laughs> Make sure you have a few park up. So don't just go, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to that park up because it's not always what it looks like on the pictures or it might be closed or it might be high barrier, anything like that. So always have a few in the vicinity so that if the first one doesn't work out, you can go to the next one. Basically have more, more than one park up. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm not getting this quick fire stuff. Are you going to see family at Christmas? Yes. Do you have a favourite van conversion you have seen live or on YouTube? Hell yeah, Brown Bird. Yeah, if you haven't seen Brown Bird and Company's uh, camper vans, then go and check them out. They make exquisite mm -hmm. camper van conversions. I know Em's favourite snack, anything, we all know that. What's Lou's favourite and does she have a secret snack hidey hole so Em doesn't eat it? My favourite snack would probably be Lindor, but I only have yes, them at Christmas. You do. Um, and no, I don't have a secret hidey hole because you'd sniff them out. We was walking through town the other day, right? And from the other side of the road, she saw through the bakery window, through all the chairs and tables and the people, went all oh, cinnamon bun and off she went. If you was a, I said, if you was a sniper for cinnamon buns, they'd all be dead. Are you doing Camp Quirky this year? No, it's not on. It's not on. We don't, we're not planning on any meets, but if we happen to be in the UK when they're on, then we may well go to them, but nothing in the pipeline. How do you Christmas shop for each other and hide the presents? We don't. We don't. <laughs> We very rarely buy each other Christmas presents yeah. and if we do it's usually in the sales afterwards because you just save money mm -hmm. Although this year you've bought me a load of sheds and outbuildings and I've bought you a new house. Yeah, exactly. See so So what? I don't know. I got lost. <laughs> I got lost <laughs> I was thinking of the cinnamon bun. Where is somewhere you have not been yet, but defo on your bucket list? My top of my bucket list is Costa Rica. Oh, same as. Is it Costa Rica as well? Yeah. What's your favourite Christmas song? Deck the halls with bars of holly. Fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. My favourite Christmas song is the Pogues and Kirsty McCall, Fairy Tale of New York. Um, my second favourite Christmas. What's the other one I said I liked earlier? The Dumb and One. Stop the Cavalry. Can't remember who sings it. If you fall out, who gives in first as a motorhome is small? I think I do. Usually, Emily. It depends. It depends who was in the wrong, but we've both learned that just give in quickly because it just is better in the long it run. It is. What's the hardest part about living full time in a van? The wet clothes, because we don't have a shower room for us. Yeah, wet clothes. For me, it's accommodating the two jobs, trying to both work mm. in here at the same time. It's very difficult. Will Joni be joining you both? I'm sure she will at some point, yeah. Yeah, she'll be coming to Ireland, and I'm sure there'll be further adventures in the warmer climates. Who do you guys watch on YouTube and what's your favourite place in the UK? Well, you know our favourite place in the UK. We were there the other day. Northumberland. Northumberland. <laughs> I'm not telling her what to say. That genuinely is our favourite place in the I was UK. Like, where was we? It's our favourite place because it's where we got married. Yeah, and we just really like it. <laughs> and who do we watch on YouTube? I'm currently into a guy called Jake Frew. It's not van life, it's very different. But yeah, Jake Frew is very good. Right, shall we try and get this second set of lights? Out? Yes, let's do it. Shall I have the little babies while you do that? It's not Christmas unless the babies. You're doing well, Louise, you're doing well. Ready? The big reveal! Three, two, one! Yay! All my other bits. Oh, look at that. I know, look, all cosy, right? Christmassy it is with my tiny amount of like decorations I got. Emily's right, we've not got loads going on this year, but we're going to be around family, aren't we? We are indeed, and I actually love the little uh, decorations that we've got. They're quite cute, and we bought them this year as well, haven't we? So on our travels. Yes, we have. Right, can we go to bed? I'll go do my babies first, but yeah. I won't lie, they do look quite pretty. Right, one more question before we go to bed. Louise, do you ever cheekily take something from Emily's snack cupboard? Well, I think we all know the answer to that is no, it's not worth losing a hand over. And the second part of that question, you seem to have such a beautiful relationship. How do you keep it sweet in such a smallish space? We do have a good relationship, don't we? We do, yeah. I think we know each other's sort of limits and boundaries as well. And I think it helps that we have different hobbies. Yeah, and years and years of practice. Like, it's not... I, I think you'd be hard pushed to find anyone that's been together for a long time that has just been like that straight off the bat. It takes work, doesn't it? It does take work, yeah. Compromise, communication and mm -hmm. learning to let things go. Yes, letting things go was probably the hardest one for me but yeah you have to learn to let things go without a doubt and, and yeah especially in a small space not just in a relationship either pick the battles you want to win mm. and if it's not that important to you it's not it's not if it's not like a nine or ten i want to win it just yeah, let it go just, and save it for nine or ten times it's true actually isn't it you, you've got to pick them battles definitely right should we go to sleep yeah go on then Look at my oh i'm gonna have to take my hat off
good morning folks today is a work day so emily's up there beavering away hopefully she'll be finished soon though um the whole point of us making this video really was so that we could answer the one question that is on everyone's mind and that is have we got an update for our cottage and uh, yes we have kind of let me turn that off or she's gonna scream at me um we kind of had an update we've got all the surveys back if you remember we was waiting for some reports we have those back now there's good news and there's bad news there's not the problem we was expecting, but there's another problem and we're waiting for a price to come back with that. So the proper written report, we've only had the verbal information over the phone. So once we've got that price back and all the costs involved, we then need to decide if we're going to renegotiate on the price, walk away or just accept that we're going to have to pay it. So we can't give you a proper update yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait, answer all your cottage questions, renovation questions, move to Ireland questions, all of those in a separate video. So bonus, this was going to be our last video of the year, but you are going to get an additional video and we will film that as soon as we've got all the information. So watch out for that next week. We are going to answer the rest of the questions we've got though. So are you ready, missus? I am, I am indeed. Right, first question is... What do you feed AJ in summer, wet or dry food? Like clockwork as she comes. The answer to that question is they have both wet and dry. And the next question is also cat related and that is any tips for getting a cat ready for van life? Oh my God, so we let Summer come in and out of the van while we was building it so that she got used to it. We stayed in it outside of the house so that she felt comfortable coming in and out and we done some little trips with her. We are quite lucky with Summer because she's old, fat and lazy and just likes to chill out on the bed. But yeah, I would say the best thing is try and get them used to it around their own normal surroundings. And definitely don't rush them into it. So if their first trip is a 12 hour drive down mm -hmm. to the south of France or Spain, they're probably gonna hate it. So take your time. Right, more questions. More questions. I'd love to try van life, but I have a fear of rodents getting in the van. Have you ever encountered that issue? We have only once, and that was on our first trip to Spain, wasn't it? And we had a tiny cute little mouse, but we managed to get it out and free him into the forest, didn't we? Yeah, and I was convinced I'd bought an invasive species. I thought I'd bought it from England into Spain and released an invasive species into Spain, but I don't think that's the case. But it is fun and games, isn't it? Oh yeah, trying to catch him as well. And he was loving Louise's pants. He was eating them all day. Rodents won't hurt you. Don't be afraid of rodents, they're lovely. Where does Louise get her confidence from and does she have any tips for becoming more confident? And um, believe it or not, I wasn't that confident as a youngster. And I would say the reason I got confident is because I just had to do things. So I moved out of, I went traveling when I was 17 and then moved down to Cornwall as soon as I got back so I was in the world quite young and you just have to bite the bullet and do it that's probably the same for you as well yeah definitely put yourself in situations that make you uncomfortable get through them mm -hmm. and you will feel a lot better but you do literally just have to do it and you will always regret not doing something mm -hmm. more than doing it and failing so yeah just whatever's worrying you if it's asking out a woman or I don't know applying for a job just do it what's the worst thing they can say no that's it, that's it. And that's you it. will learn from that. Yeah. Would you consider a meet and greet somewhere central for your army of subbers to come and say hello? Or is that a bit unsettling? We had this question for Ireland as well, so we'll answer the whole thing. We would love to, wouldn't we? Absolutely love to, yeah. It'd be so, so nice. But I'm more scared that nobody will turn up. It, yeah, and also, <coughs> we're always, um, like, so our plans are never consistent so actually arranging a date and a place and a location would be difficult but we definitely want to do it do you want some <laughs> sorry it's too much talking so it yeah oh while i've got this in my hand actually a few of you have asked about a link for this we'll stick a link in the description again um there are some huge christmas offers on so you get like uh money off depending on how much you spend so this is an air up bottle and we absolutely love ours don't yes. we yes yes very nice and it really is making emily drink way more pure water than you would otherwise do so it's a massive help on our health kick so that's air up check them out link in the description right next question what are your plans for christmas and 2024 well christmas we're going home aren't we? we are we're going home for christmas to see family and uh, we say home we're going to I know. Camp. we don't have a home so that's very weird isn't it we're driving <laughs> home for Christmas and um, we don't have a home but Kent is where we're from yeah. and then for 2024 really very difficult to answer there will definitely be a house purchase of some kind mm -hmm. whether it's the one we're trying to purchase or a different one and there will be travel that we know that but as to where when well we know we're going to do Scandinavia in yes. the summer we are I'm so excited for that I'm so excited yes but apart from that there's no set plans we're next in the van where well, it will probably it will probably be back to Ireland to mm -hmm. either buy the house or look for new ones if not, if that looks like it's going to be uh, a long time going through, then I might do a little solo trip to like Slovakia and around yep. that area for maybe a month or something. But again, subject to change. 
and is the trip around Europe off the cards now you have found the cottage? It's not off the cards, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be one long trip. It'll probably be like like we normally do, three yeah. months at a time. Yeah. But we definitely still want to get to like Eastern Europe and yes. do all of the bits we haven't done. So it's definitely still on the cards. It's just a case of when. It's going to be in and around house cottage stuff, isn't it? Yes, but we'll definitely be going because mm -hmm. I can't wait to get over there. So I've kind of mixed up three questions there as well, but yeah, the last part of this question, does this mean van life is on the back burner? 100% definitely not. No. We're just getting ourselves a nice proper base for when AJ's too old to travel, but yep. van life I don't think for a very long time will ever be on the back burner. Where in the UK or Ireland would it be nice to rent a camper van for three or four nights and explore? Anywhere. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. a really hard question to answer, but my, my top pick for England would be Northumberland. Yeah, Northumberland, you've got the Peak District, Lake District. Yeah, Lake District's really hard in a van because everywhere's no overnight camping. Same oh, with yeah, Cornwall. True. Cornwall's lovely, but no overnight camping. I would say get yourself the app park for night, find a place you want to go to, have a look at the park ups, mm -hmm. do the reviews, get a gauge for what the area's reception is to van life and then go there. But then you can't really go wrong, just yeah, island anywhere along the west coast, anywhere yeah. in the middle. East coast is lovely. It, Northern Ireland is ideal, isn't yeah. it? There's, there's and it also depends many. on where you live because if you live in, live in Cornwall, but you have to go all the way up to Northumberland yeah, for three for or four, or four days, it's quite, a long way. it's quite a long way. So yeah, that's a really hard one to, to answer, to be fair. Yep, and then I'll pair it up with, is there one place or more you could recommend to definitely visit when we finally get over to Ireland? We really liked Dingle and Donegal, didn't yes. we? Yes, yes, so, so lovely. But I'm sure there's plenty more other mm -hmm. places that people will absolutely love. And staying on the Irish theme, right, your videos have made me want to drive the Wild Atlantic Way. Do you think it would be safe for a solo woman? The people seem friendly. They really do. This, they're very lovely, very welcoming, but we did go kind of out of season, so we can't really comment on what it would be like in season, mm -hmm. uh, but from from our experience, I don't, I don't see there being an issue. Yeah, the island, we would say, was is really safe. Um, they're all always, as a solo woman, no matter, even yep. if it's just walking through town at night, there'll always be an element of risk, but um, as far as we're concerned, islands up there, high on the list for safe countries. Uh, just be sensible. Right, final question, and this question got the most likes in the poll. I don't know why, and I don't really have an answer. Louise, you obviously love a good innuendo, I do. But what's the most inappropriate thing you have said at the most inappropriate time? Did the room fall silently in shock? Did old ladies faint? Give us the deets. I honestly can't think of any time where people have been too offended. And I no. would say that is because we choose to surround ourselves with people that like banter and do banter and enjoy banter. And we don't surround ourselves with boring old farts that can't <laughs> handle a joke. <laughs> would be my answer to that that's true actually yeah it's all about the people you surround yourself with and clearly the people we hang about with are just as crude as what we are well what louise is yeah and i would say it's the same for you lot as well because you seem to enjoy a bit of uh, banter and innuendo and improper unwokey stuff i think it's nice to be able to do that i hate it when it's all oh could i say that couldn't i say that i just want to be able to say certain things yes and on that note i think we're done i'm sorry if this video is dragged on a bit and like i say all the cottage information as soon as we have it we will make the video it might not even come out sunday we might put it out sooner but as soon as we've got that information and we have negotiated with nigel and tried to get that price down to fix all the problems that there are then we will do that video won't we we will indeed and on that note um just in case you was wondering salad cream won by a country mile in the salad oh. cream versus mayonnaise in egg sandwiches and for the americans if you don't know what salad cream is it's like mayonnaise but with a taste it's tangy, it's got vinegar and mustard in it, it's weird. You're all weirdos who want to have salad cream with eggs. And if you enjoyed the video, please do hit and hit. Yeah, blah, blah. damn it. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, hit the, you know what I mean. Subscribe to something and like something, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.